the uh, master of ceremony okay come on we can start now the master of ceremony Ima, Ima, are you here? Ima, hello? Yes, mom. Yeah, okay, we can start now. Is, is she the master of ceremony? Yes. Have done, mom. Ma Icha, Ma Icha. Oh, okay, Icha. Icha, mana Icha? Yes, mom. Yeah, okay. Could you start now? Have done, mom. I don't see you. Or I just start now without the... Yeah, yeah, okay. It's better about the big, yeah. Okay, uh... Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning everyone. Yeah, nice to see you again in our uh, lecture with uh, our guest lecture, Mr. Juan Soto Franco from uh, United States. Yeah. Now uh, our topic now we will discuss um, things related to Kahoot. Yeah, and then Google Forms and Google Docs. Yeah. This are uh, quite interesting, yeah, for us, yeah. Actually, for uh, we could make use of those uh, teaching media in the classroom, yeah. Now, um, Mr. Juan, um, I think uh, time is yours now, Mr. Juan. Come on. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Rizal. Uh, here we go. Then in this case, uh, let me just start share my screen. First off, as always, I would like to say thank you to Anis Sundasie for being the intermediary person, the contact, the link between uh, Professor Rizal and Dr. Taruye to make this event possible. So again, I want to thank God for allowing me the opportunity to address this whole uh, body of students from uh, a great part of Indonesia. And I see some people from the Dominican Republic. So that's awesome. And I welcome one and all. Good morning, Indonesia. Good evening, uh, the rest of the Western Hemisphere. So let me just Good start sharing my screen. And uh, here I go. All right, testing. Can everybody see my screen right now? Yes. Yes, to get it. Perfect. Well, let's begin. As you all can see, today we're gonna we're addressing the second session of this series of three, and uh, we're gonna be dealing with Google Docs, Google Forms, and Kahoot. And I would like to welcome everybody by saying Salamat Datang. I think I'm learning how to pronounce this. Uh, um, my name is Juan Soto Franco, and I have a master's degree in applied linguistics and another one, another master in education dealing with uh, educational technology. My email accounts are listed right there, and I have a motto, uh, which is an educator sees a, a teaching opportunity everything. So keeping that in mind, let's begin with Google Doc. Google Doc, um, let me just minimize my screen, my window right here. Okay, so what is it? It's simply a word processing tool that we use online, uh, like Microsoft Word, WordPad, and it's owned by Gmail. So Gmail it's necessary, a Gmail account is necessary in order to operate Google Docs. 
If you want to go directly to their website, you would have to go to docs.google.com. Um, they use the same format, a very similar so format as Microsoft Word, meaning that you can change the font, the size, the, the lining, you can bold, use italics, underline, etc., etc. Uh, it is a cloud-based tool and no physical hardware is needed. How does it work? Well, it auto saves the document, meaning that you don't have to hit the save button anymore to save your document. So as you're typing, uh, the, the, the application is saving your document right away. Um, you can use real-time collaboration and sharing. That means that this document can be shared with other colleagues, other uh, among students, among staff members, and they can collaborate real time, meaning simultaneously. It works on any device, be it a smartphone, laptop, tablet, or desktop. Um, it can work online, and it can, if you prefer to do it, uh, you can also do it offline. Uh, through this link, you can go to Google for Education in order to learn a little bit more about this particular tool and they have some video tutorials. I won't go through them, but you can perfectly uh, go over them anytime you want to. Uh, it's Google for education and the link is right there, right here on the slide, which I'm sharing with the whole class. So you can visit that later. How do we see this from an English uh, teaching perspective. Well, we can customize reading, which means you can adapt the reading to uh, depending on the level of the student, of the student, and that will enhance the reading comprehension and um, vocabulary retention as well. Uh, it can be used for brainstorming activities. Let's say uh, not only for students, but among colleagues, teachers, and uh, staff members, whoever wants to use this tool would have an opportunity also to improve their writing skills. And of course, taking advantage of the opportunity of collaborating simultaneously. Well, what is and how does it work? Let's explore uh, Google Docs for a second. This is a document I have already created, and it's just to give you a, a brief uh, overview on how it works. As you can see, we have a title right here. This part is the title. And I wanna mention that it is the title because once we click on the left-hand side, we'll be able to see uh, who I outline. Am. Yes. Excuse me, do, do you share the uh browser now or the powerpoint oh the powerpoint is the only one sharing but not the document oh i think you you click on another link yeah we didn't see the link i mean the the, the google talk links did you okay. could you please share again uh, absolutely let me multiple, just share again sure. multiple sharing yeah i think so Okay, so here we go. Can you see this now? Yes, yes, we can see it now. Awesome. So here's the thing, uh, as I was just saying, uh, this is a Google Docs document I have already created with the idea of just going over it and showing you some details of what we have on here. As you can see, it is a very, uh, it looks pretty much like Microsoft Word. You can change the font, the size, bold, italic underline, change the, the colors, etc. You also have a menu here. Uh, by the way, this is called the taskbar. And uh, when I mentioned the title, is because we can also create an outline, which is very helpful in order to navigate the document later on. As you can see here, I have added the word heading one, 
because if you can look over here on the styles, we can actually select. By default, it is the normal text, but then once you start adding the titles, subtitles, headings, etc., then the document starts looking like an outline. So if I click on the left hand side, it'll show the outline to me. And if I want it to go to a specific part of the document, like voice recording, you would see that it takes me directly to that part of the document. If I want to go to a translating document, it takes me to that part of the document. So it's pretty helpful to have, and let's go back to the, the, the let's go back to the heading. And then that said, we can perfectly navigate the document as, a, as you can see, the title says that uh, we're going to be dealing with title, heading, uh, the explore tool, the voice typing, and also the translation and sharing aspects of this document. Well, the heading, as I just mentioned before, if you select this section, you can go to the styles and then choose from here the headings. If once you do that and you select it, you apply it to the document, that's when you will be able to see it on the outline. Another aspect that we can use uh, on Google Docs is the voice recording or voice typing. And in order to do this, we would have to go to the tools um, uh, tab then go down to where it says voice, voice typing. And just to demonstrate that, we have illustrated it right here. But you would say, oh wait, how did you get that image there? Well, very simple. If we look at the right hand side at the bottom, there is a tool called Explore. If I open, it open on the sidebar, but I can go there either by clicking explore or by going into the tools tab and finding it right here where it says explore. So on the right hand side, I have a search bar. So if I just type in Google Docs and hit enter, and I want to see the images that are related to this, if I scroll down, guess what? I will find this exactly the same image I have on the screen because I prepared this before. As you can see, this is exactly what I have on the screen. However, I had to crop the image in order to select that particular area that I'm interested in. I could perfectly click on the arrows to move to the right or move to the left to see all the other images. And when I know which one I want, I would just go ahead and click insert. I won't do it now because uh, I have already done it and this image was already cropped. To crop an image, you just have to uh, right click and select the crop image tool. And that would allow you to simply trim the image. And after you hit enter, you are left off, left off with what you really wanted. Well, that, that is the explore section of the document. Then here is an example of how uh, the voice typing works. I'm going to do this by going to Tools and selecting the voice typing tool. As you can see, there is a microphone that opens up right here on the side. I can drag it and place it wherever I want. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and click the microphone and record something. In this case, I would. I think I want to say thank you in Indonesian. So let's see how that works. Oh, first, I have to change the language, which I have here, Bahasa Indonesia. And now I'm ready to record. Terima kasih. As you can see, I said this word, this expression, and yes. it was typed. Yes. Did I hear a question? No, no, nothing. No. All right. So that is so interesting that uh, if you actually do not want to type all the time, you can simply speak out 
and through this microphone, depending on the language you choose, and you can do this in Spanish, in English, French, whatever language is listed over here, you just have to uh, select it. And then you'll be able to um, use that tool properly. As we move on down here, we can also translate the document. And again, you don't have to add this part that says heading one. I'm just, I just have it there to, in order to illustrate that this is, uh, you need to select the heading one in, or two or whichever you prefer or you, uh, according to the order of the events in your document to make sure that they appear on the outline and for easy navigation later. So uh, the translating tool, how does it work? Well, very simple. Uh, the first thing we do is simply go to tools again and then it says here uh, translate document. In this case, I would like to translate this document to, um, how about Indonesian again? There it is. So let's see, let's click translate and let's see what happens. Voila, I mean, voila is in French, but uh, as you can see, the document has been translated to Indonesian. How accurate is it? I don't really know but you, the audience, can tell me if this is actually uh, translated correctly. As you can see, that document opened up right next to the original document, which was listed on this tab. And as I move on to the second tab, the tab to the right, there you have the other document translated into the different language you chose. Um, back to the original document. The other tool I would like to share with you is that you can share this document and it could be worked with different partners, with other students, with other colleagues. And in order to do that, you would simply have to click on the share button at the top right. And then from there, as you can see in, on the images, you will have to select the link. And in order to do that, you will click on change the link and then you can assign the role these uh, people that will receive this document will have whether they are going to be viewers or commenters or editors let's see if i click share um, by the way by default the document is created as a private document but it's only when you decide to change the setting that you can allow people to actually uh, see this and that's why it says here I can set it up I can change it to restricted I can change it so that people can anyone with this link can view it and again uh, I would have to select the role I want to give people in this case I can if they are my colleagues and I want to give them the role of editors, I would choose editors, but if it's on the students and I just want them to comment on the document, they'll do that. Before I hit done, I wanna click on copy link and that's how the link gets copied to the clipboard. And then from there, I would hit done. Uh, if I wanted to share this document, I would just go to my email account and I would just compose my email and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna send this to, uh, Professor uh, David Rizal. And then I'm just gonna label the link and I'm gonna say hi. I'm going to quickly paste the link and say bye. That simple. So this way he should be receiving this email and he would be able to see the document and together we could collaborate and work on it. Of course, I could share this with everybody I want. Uh, I could share this via email. I could uh, embed this document on any uh, other um, a website or uh, learning management system like Blackboard, Moodle, Google Classroom, etc. All right, so I think if I switch to the presentation again, can you see my presentation? 
Mr. Miza. No, no, I, no, I think you should. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I, uh, again, yeah. So I'm gonna have to go to advanced, probably. No, it doesn't. Well, let's just continue with this part and let's not mess up at this moment. Alrighty, so let's go back to the presentation. So that's how Google Docs looks like. And uh, with that said, I would like to move on and here we go. Teddy Makasi, comment, questions? Uh, Juan, uh, yes. you introduce yeah, how to translate yeah, using Google Docs. Yeah. Usually for, for us, yeah, Indonesian people, we use uh, the website. I mean, for, for translate documents, yeah, not uh, Google Docs. Yeah. This is quite interesting if we, uh, and, and also the, you know, if the, the original language, I mean, the first language is, is not, is not complicated. Uh, I mean, the sentences are simple sentence, yeah, not, compound complex sentence yeah and you know uh, it is clear that their sentences not phrases or fragments yeah I think the translation is, is really good yeah um, in could you could you please um, what is it um, could we use this features yeah of google docs yeah for a uh, real classroom not only i mean for the online classroom yeah but face to face uh, classroom face to face interaction what, what do you think uh what that's a good a very good point mr rizal and thank you for your comment uh yes i think that the translation part of the Google Docs is quite interesting. However, as I have always said to my students, it takes a real translator or someone who knows both languages to make sure that the translation is accurate. So sometimes the translation is there, but there might be some punctuation missing. There might be a sentence that is not, uh, that doesn't sound quite right. And then it takes uh, some an expert to go over the document and make sure that the document makes sense. Uh, I do agree with you. It is a great tool, and but again, use it with caution. Uh, to respond to your question, if this do, if a Google uh, Docs can be used in the classroom and not online, Google Docs yes has the opportunity to be used offline, which means it can be used. Um, without internet connection. Now, uh, when it comes to using the translation, I think that at that point in time, you would need to have a connection to the internet to, in order to do that. Um, that's all I can say, but I think you can perfectly use it offline in the classroom with the students on their particular device, whether they're using a cell phone or tablet or laptop, or even in a computer lab with desktop computers. Thank you for your question. Okay, uh, now we, we are waiting for uh, questions or comments yeah, from uh, participants. Uh, Absolutely. Any one of you have any comments or questions? Come on, we are waiting for the questions and comments. They can post them in the chat as well. I think there is some comments in the chat. Can I ask no a question? question? This is Savino from Santo Domingo. Okay, hey, Savino, okay. how are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to hear. I, I came in a little late uh, because it is my father-in-law's birthday and he happens to be home. He came three hours from home. Remember that he lives in Barahona. I am from the same country uh, Juan Soto is from. And I had a question. I, I was wondering, I mean, if you talked about a, how to create tests on Google Form, because I have not been able to create tests on the free version. Is it possible or not? 
Uh, first off, uh, let me say thank you so much for attending the invitation, Sabina. Sabina is also my colleague at the, uh, my former alma mater in the Dominican Republic, Universidad Autónoma de Santo Domingo, which I love and respect a lot, as well as my colleagues. Yes, Sabina, uh, you are right on time. Uh, this is the first part of the presentation, so we're dealing with Google Docs, but uh, we're going to move on the next. Uh, portion of the presentation has to do with uh, Google Forms, and of course, we can you can we can use Google Forms to create quizzes, whether they are multiple choice, uh, essay format, uh, check boxes, drop down menus, you name it. We'll go over that in a few minutes. And happy birthday to your father-in-law. Anybody else? I think that there is a question in chat box, Padafik. There is a question from yes. Salsa. Yeah, Salsa Firda. What makes Google Docs superior? Uh, Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word, yeah. Okay, um, come on. All right, thank you so much for your question. If I can say the name, the name of this person is Salsa. Yes, salsa. salsa. Okay, awesome. Oh, salsa. Well, salsa is that salwa. It's a female or male? Female, female. Uh, okay, so Miss Salsa, thank you so much for your question. And uh, yes, I can see that uh, there's a series of, uh, I mean, a number of people, a great the majority of people would use uh, Microsoft Word because that's what we have been used to. Uh, However, that's a private software, which you have to pay for it as, as, as opposed to Google Docs, where the document is, the, the application is free and you can use it. It might not have all the features that you'll find in uh, Microsoft Word, but the fact that it is online makes Google Docs more robust, more, uh, more likely to be used by a larger number of people and make it probably more popular uh, as time goes by. So I would say that that's the difference I see, if that answers your question. By the way, I would like to give a shout out to my daughter, Pamela Soto. She's also here. I see a direct message from her. She is in the Dominican Republic as well. Hello, everybody. Very nice to meet you all. <laughs> nice to meet okay. you too. Nice to meet you. Hello. That's her. <laughs> Thank you, Pamela, for being here. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other comments or questions? Comment or questions, please, uh, from students. I don't know if I missed out, but I think that one of the advantages over Google Docs over uh, Microsoft Word is that, for instance, I used it for my thesis for my uh, project when I graduated from um, college, and I was able to edit with my partner, um, and we were able to edit it like from he was at his place and I was at my place, so there was no need for us to be together at the same place, same time. So I think that's one of the uh, biggest advantages of Google Docs over um, Microsoft Word, right? If I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. Absolutely, you are not mistaken at all. As you can see here, we have the collaborative, coll collaborative uh, writing uh, taking place at the same time, simultaneously editing. So both of you were able to work differently from different locations, from different computers, different devices, and still we're working on the same document. Uh, one. That, that goes along with another example. Uh, one of my colleagues here at Oslo's Community College, uh, he and his friends, his colleagues, also wrote a book. Um, they use a, sharing, a shared document to do that. Yes, Professor Rizal. 
uh, actually we can use also Microsoft uh, 600 uh, 365 yeah 365 yes well, to collaborate yes. yeah and yes. you know if we use uh, Google Docs yeah for example if you want to write a manuscript yeah I think the Absolutely. format the format is different yeah uh, from the Microsoft Word yeah especially uh, Microsoft uh, what do you say? Three, three sixty-five. Three sixty-five. Yeah. Yes. Three sixty-five. Yes. What, what do you from think? Off. It's from Office.com and at work we use it. Uh, it's very versatile. Uh, versatile. Uh, I mean, we can use it. Uh, we can share the document with other colleagues. The same way we do it with Google Docs. Uh, I, I think. The competition is there, but there might not be such a huge difference among them since there are online tools that anyone can use at different time, different uh, places, uh, different devices. If the, there is no more question, I think uh, you can go on with. Was that a question? Yeah. No. And okay. Yeah. One, one, if, one, if yeah. there's any if there's any other question, then they might type it in the chat box or just save it for later. Uh, let's just move on then. And of course, after we have questions and comments, what's up next? One uh, assignment. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Professor Riza. One, actually, if uh, if we want to make a uh, Google Doc for reading exercises, for example, this one is also possible, yeah. But the the problem is that we we can we can uh, what is it? We can give um, essay questions, and then actually it is possible we can give essay question, but the feedback. Uh, you know, if you want to give feedback, uh, you know, it's it's another problem meaning that uh, it's it's quite difficult for us to mark yeah students uh, answers what, what do you think about this one especially for essay questions for reading exercises well i would say that it is not that difficult uh, let's see and the, there is a section that is called comment if you all can see my document can you see that can you all see the document, the word yes, document? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, perfect. So here, if I were grading this, imagine this is an, an essay, and uh, uh, all of a sudden I see this word and I want to comment on that. I would just go to the upper right corner and where it says open uh, common history, I would just, I'm sorry, I, if there were any comments, they would appear over there in the history, but I could just click on the plus sign as you can see it on the right. And then right there, I would say, uh, I would type in a comment. And then I hit comment. So the same way I just posted that comment, it could be a correction as well, but it could be also an encouragement to the student uh, uh, knowing that that student did something well on the essay. So yes, on essays, we can give them feedback. We can add comments. We can edit those comments and so on and so forth. How, those, can, we those, give, how can we mark yeah, the, the assignment, for example, in terms of giving score? Oh, that would that would all depend on you. Uh, you can use rubrics, like if you decide uh, to Daddy. evaluate. Yes. Uh, is that a question? No. no I think no. I think no. Okay. So if if you wanted to mark, give a, a grade to that particular assignment, it depends on your syllabus. If you decided that that essay has a total of 15 points, for instance, you might just create a rubric where you have 
uh, five different categories and there were three points max, whether you were assessing the grammar aspect or you're assessing the, uh, the flow of the essay, whether you are assessing the punctuation, grammar, etc. So you divide the categories and you assign different points whether the student scores poorly, uh, halfway or super. And then you would just assign different points on that rubric and depending on what you see on the essay, you can assign the or mark and give the points that you agreed on. Does that answer your question? Yes. All right. All right. Could, could I add something, Juan? Absolutely. Please go ahead. Uh, one thing I like to do is to, uh, when correcting essays, uh, especially if it is like a manageable size, I like to copy paste the essay and then at the bottom, keep an original one and then make corrections on top. And then I tell my students to compare what I am writing there, uh, the kind of editing that I'm doing with my, um, with my comments. I mean, I have special colors for whatever is grammar, for whatever is punctuation, uh, whatever is rhetoric, whatever is grammar. And then I write a summary with a different coloring. I tell them that blue, for example, is where I write my comments. And then my students are able to see both what they have written and what I suggest as what I have appraised. Then that way you can do that. I don't know if you can show them a little bit. I have some examples here. If you, if you want me to share some of them, I could, I could do that anytime you want it. I don't know if it would interrupt your plans, but I think you can show them, you can show them that easily. Yes, I think so. I think so. I actually appreciate your comments, Sabina, and your willingness to uh, to participate and provide that information. And of course, we can share that document later uh, so that uh, Professor Rizal can share it with the students to see how you do it. But again, as this, uh, you're color coding the different aspects of the document. And of course, that is also very helpful to the students. Thank you so much for your input, Sabina. All righty, so back to our presentation and I think we still have the time uh, in our favor. Uh, of course, after the questions, we have the assignment. And for this assignment, we are asking uh, Mr. Rizal to please go ahead and share these links in the chat. Uh, we have created five groups here and uh, on, on Google Docs. And these groups will be working on different aspects of, uh, of the English language, whether it is vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, reading, or writing. So I don't know exactly how many universities we have here, but if we have more than five universities, I would suggest that if you are located uh, in the same region, say, for instance, uh, the same province, uh, then you can group uh, yourselves in group one, group two, uh, group three. I I'm not very familiar with the geography of the participants and where they come from and where they're located, but Mr. Rizal, if you can help us sort this out, uh, once you share the links for each one of these activities, maybe um, and that would be very helpful. Yeah, should, should we uh, make breakout rooms for the discussion here, Sir Juan? Yes, that's a good idea. Um, okay, let me... Uh, Pak Rizal, sorry, Pak okay. David. Yes. Yeah, but before going on, yeah, by doing this assignment, I think, um, Juan. Yes. You need you need to explain more clearly, yeah, about what we need to do regarding uh, the, this assignment. For example, for group one, share your ideas on vocabulary building. So, what is actually the assignment? 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a good uh, question. And I, I, I like the fact that you asked for clarification. Yes. Since this is a shared document uh, where everybody's going to be participating simultaneously, uh, you're going to be sharing or adding ideas that can be used for vocabulary building in, uh, in English. What activities can you create to uh, help students improve or increase their vocabulary? Uh, that's for group one. For group two, uh, which ideas or activities uh, do you want to share um, on grammar teaching uh, tips on how to create uh, activities for grammar learning? The same thing for pronunciation, for reading and writing. Does that make sense? Is it clearer now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. <laughs> glad, yeah. glad I was able you to You use clarify. very concise instruction. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just did it that yeah. way for the sake for the sake of the slideshow. I didn't want to populate it with so much information. Uh, even though the link is so long, <laughs> but still, the idea was just to make sure okay. that uh, group one focuses on vocabulary, group two focuses on grammar, group three focuses on pronunciation, four on reading, and five on writing. Um, All right, so we can see that the links have been provided. for groups one, group two, and group three, and very soon groups four and group five. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is just an attempt to have you guys work simultaneously from different locations on a particular document. If you are not sure where you are, you fit in, that's not a problem. You can just join whatever group you prefer or you want, especially those who are in the Dominican Republic or in the United States. If you want to join any of these groups, feel free to join either group. But the idea is that you join the activity and you are able to collaborate and um, share your thoughts uh, in typing, in writing. Thank you, Mr. Rizal, for providing. You know, all I think the, the one you, you create uh, on your PowerPoint is different from the one you sent me in, in email here yeah, in terms of groups here. Yeah. Remember, does it belong to group two or group five here? Yeah. Hmm. In your, oh, grammar, I think group five, uh, writing is group five here. Yeah. Okay. I think you, just miss. Uh, I think uh, you didn't change the the name of uh, the topic here. Yeah. The so it should be five uh, here. Okay, thank you. Not, uh, not... Okay, should I share it? So let me just quickly uh, go ahead and yeah, post I, I think the you, link. You should share again the link. Yeah, yeah, this one. Group five. This one okay. is, is uh, quite the same. A group five. And I think Juan, we, we can yes. uh, create uh, these uh, meetings into five groups, yeah. So uh, randomly, so meaning that uh, from other institution can join uh, in group one or group two. What, what do you think? I will create. That, that's a good idea. You would like to help me with that? Yeah, I yeah, appreciate yeah. Appreciate it. I will. Too. I will create this into five groups and how many uh, minutes uh, will you give them to prepare? I think uh, it will be... Everybody should be typing one idea and if that's the case, uh, I'd say that that wouldn't take them more than a minute, but let's give them about five minutes, five to six minutes, so we can move on with the rest. Five to six? Uh, six minutes, okay. Okay, uh, Juan, to, to you, uh, I mean, let's say, for example, in group one, yeah, uh, I, I, still, I still didn't get the point, yeah. 
the vocabulary meaning that do, do they create only Google Doc or exercises and vocabulary or just uh, text? Okay, how would you build vocabulary in a class uh, through Google Docs? How would you have them uh, enhance or increase or gain vocabulary? What activities, what would you say that uh, would you would use for that particular activity? Share a thought, an idea. That's all we're asking for. Mm -hmm. I see. So, okay, share idea on, let's say on teaching and learning vocabulary. Is that what you mean? Teaching and yes. learning? Okay. Yes. It's a type, yeah, in Google Job. Is that what you mean? Okay. Uh, now, we we give them six minutes. Is that correct? Yes. So, did, you for, did you already make the groups? Yes, yes. I, I already awesome. made the group. Awesome. Now, we start now? Yes, please. Let's okay. set that time. For, uh, for, for all participants, uh, now we want you to join the breakout rooms. Yeah, we have five. Yeah. So if, if in, in group one, meaning that uh, you will uh, discuss vocabulary, and then group two, grammar, group three, pronunciation, group four, reading, and group five, uh, writing. We, we start now. Please join the breakout room. Thank you so much, Mr. Risa. Yeah, yeah welcome.
Audio Elizabeth. One, some some of the students are still confused. Uh, what to do okay. in breakout rooms? Meaning, you know. Uh, what you see. All right. Yeah. I, I understand. And uh, that's okay because learning brings some confusion. And yeah. after clarification comes learning. Yeah. So, uh, for the sake of having a very short uh, instruction and not loading those uh, slides. Probably, uh, and I would just say, that's mea culpa. That means that my bad. I should have been more uh, specific, more detailed for uh, my uh, instructions. However, um, the whole idea of this uh, was to share a document and see how people from different places using different devices would be able to interact on one particular document, whether the uh, what they said was or what they typed was very relevant or less relevant, that didn't matter. The idea was to be able to share a document, get into it, see how others collaborate and how you also collaborate on that particular document. And later on, uh, as you continue doing the same thing, the same activity, you will find a way how to do uh, a better uh, a better collaboration. And that is part of the process of learning, I would say. 
So I apologize if uh, I confused you with my short uh, minimalist instructions, but the idea was to have you all uh, share the document and type in something and see how others actually work. All right. Uh, Hello, Yes. Hello, Hello. Yeah, okay. So all of us have ID, but then when we write something on the document, Google Docs, yeah, it is it anonymous. How come is it? Because that's the default uh, setting. You can always change that later and change it to your own name so everybody knows who is who. But originally, by default, uh, Google Docs just assign you something randomly. Uh, you might be a tiger, you might be a hippo, you might be a rhino, <laughs> uh, any, uh, anything. Thank you for your, asking, uh, your question, Dr. Tray. Shall we move on? Yes, yeah, you can move on. All right, thank you. Okay, doc. So as we move on, uh, we're gonna click here and welcome you to the next session, the next part of our session two. And this has to do with Google Forms. Google Forms, and then we will follow and finish with Kahoot. Uh, Google Forms, if we look at it, uh, in the context of English teaching, we will notice that it is a very easy tool to create quizzes and we can test grammar, vocabulary, listening comprehension. We could test uh, reading comprehension. We can test writing. We can embed videos uh, onto Google Forms and create questions that range from multiple choice, check boxes, short answer, short answers, um, essay or paragraph writing or true or false, et cetera. Uh, you can set up your quiz so that you can get a quick, as students can get a quick automated response, meaning that you don't have to be there to grade it and the Google Forms grades it automatically for you and gives them a feedback, which is great. Once you create your um, your form or I mean your quiz, you don't have to be there to grade it. And then you will get a graphic display of the overall performance, and you can also check the individual responses. Uh, that said, why don't you just try to go to Google Forms and see how that works? First off, uh, you cannot see this, right? No, it only shows your PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so let me just go back to this and then be able to show you this. How about now? Yes, we're able to see it. Awesome, thank you so much for responding. All righty, so here we have that the very first thing we wanted to do is go to the settings once we go to go Google um, Forms. And on the settings, by default, this part, this make this a quiz is off. So you have to turn it on. You just have to click on it and then it'll come on. Then you can set up the parameters or the settings the way you want. Uh, you want the, the missed questions to be uh, displayed when they're incorrect, the correct answers the point value of each one of these uh, answers. How about the points? You can increase the value of the points. By default, it comes up, uh, comes with five points set up, but you can increase it or decrease it depending on your preference or how many points you want to give to this particular quiz. How about the responses? If you click on the Chevron, Chevron uh, arrow, the down arrow, you can collect uh, the responses via email. And in order to do that, this has to be turned on. Uh, you can continue 
I'm going down the list and setting up the presentation of the questions. If you want to show a progress bar, if you want to shuffle the order of the question, which is pretty nice uh, when you create quizzes and many students are going to be uh, taking it. Um, as you can see, there are some also some restrictions that may apply or may not, depending on your preference. The form, by default, you want them to uh, insert their email and also to make sure that they have to respond to the questions. So those are requirements that we want to have, have on so that every student participates will provide an email and will provide uh, an answer to each question. That said, by the way, I have already created a quiz, but let me quickly just go over the one I have created. After you're done with the settings, the next step is to go to the questions. And, and they are going to ask you to give a title to the to this particular quiz. So once you set up the, the title, it'll appear right up here. You can either type it over here or over here and then click back into this area. And that way you will be able to get the title on both places. Then you want to, since I'm creating this quiz based on a video, now we want to give the instructions for that particular assignment. As you can see, the email has been uh, set up as required. That's why you see that a red asterisk on uh, next to the email. And then student will type in their email account right there. Next uh, is to insert this video, which by the way, I have already selected. Um, now, in order to do that, the first, we want to set the cursor right there. And from there, we want to come to this vertical menu and we want to click on add a video. If I click add video, it displays the YouTube. And if I know the URL for that, I can go ahead and type it in. Or if I just um, know the title, I would just search for the video. And probably, yes, I'm lucky. I got it right there, introducing Indonesia. If I click on it, it allows me to select it. So I click the bottom, the button says select. And that's how the, the video gets inserted. Uh, notice that there is there are three dots over here. That's the menu. So I want to align this to the center so that it appears right in the middle of the screen. But I also want to make sure that if I, uh, by clicking on the video, I want to enlarge this to make sure that it appears uh, in a size that occupies almost the whole screen. As you can see, this I have here is exactly the same thing I have here. So what I'm gonna do is going to delete this one since I already uh, have created this one. I added a title to the video and then I created the question. How do you create the questions? Well, by default, you would have this menu right here and the plus sign is to add the questions. And this is going to answer Sabina's uh, earlier question about Google Forms to create uh, questions and quizzes. Based on the video they watch, they will have to answer these multiple choice questions. And from this area, I can drag and drop and switch and swap wherever I want those questions to be placed. And that uh, is something that you can do anytime you want. Uh, you can insert a title, you can insert a video, you can also insert images if you will, if you want. Anyways, in this case, when I created the multiple choice question. As you can see right here, I have the options, one, two, three options. I could add more if I wanted to. And then after that, 
I will just click on the answer key to make sure that the correct answer gets some feedback. So if this is the correct answer, I would click it and then I would just click on uh, add feedback. And by adding this feedback, notice that it gives me two tabs, incorrect answers and correct answers. So for the incorrect answer, I would type something like now answer is Indonesia because the video is about Indonesia. And then for the correct answer, I would choose a way to say correct or awesome or great or good job or well done, whatever. And then uh, <clears throat> I could also insert a link to give students more details about a, a correct answer if needed. In this case, I don't need any uh, link to insert. And then I would hit save. Again, since I have already created these questions, I'm just gonna hit cancel and go back to the question. Once I finish, I click done and that question was created. I would repeat the procedure over and over until I am done with all the questions. I would add one more just for the sake of uh, showing you and demonstrating how to do this. Um, once I click, oh, by the way, I can also duplicate, not, not in this, not in this one. Um, again, by clicking on the plus sign, I'm adding another question, which, which was placed right up here. And by clicking into that this area, I would just type uh, I would say the video was interesting. The video was inviting, and then I would just choose from these options uh, yes, no, maybe, or at all. That's a fast way to do this. So you just click there and all my answers are listed here. So students will have to choose um, what they consider okay. And then again, if I click on the answer key, if I want to say that the video was inviting, then I would say that yes is my correct answer. And then the feedback, I would just go and say, if it is the correct, the wrong answer or the incorrect answer, I say no. The correct what? answer. Yes. Okay. The correct answer is yes. If it is the correct answer, I would say awesome. And then click save. By doing this, you can see the new question has been created over here. And again, it is worth five points and so on and so forth. So I have a look at the doc and the total points. I can come up here and as you can see, every question has been listed as five points. And at this point in time, 35 um, points have been added. I could continue on and on by watching the video and, and uh, Oh, by the way, I needed to hit done in order to make sure that that question was added to the quiz. Once I'm done with all that, the next step would be to simply send this um, quiz to everybody. In this case, I could perfectly send it via email by adding the email account here. Um, the big result or I could simply type in each individual email account or click on the link and then copy the link. Notice that there is a version that I can shorten by clicking on this box, I can shorten the URL. Look at how small it became. Look at how long it is. So once I click on that, it shortens the URL. I copy it 
and then I should be able to share it with the class in this case. I can share it in the in the chat so everybody can go over that later and complete it by watching it as an activity for this. So again, that's how the quiz is created. That's how we go ahead and set it up, create the questions, give feedback, and, and, and allot the number of points each question is worth. And then Google Forms will grade the, the questions, the answers, and will also give uh, immediate and um, appropriate feedback based on the way we have set it up. Well, that said, that is about Google Forms. If I move on, I would have to say Teddy Makasi. And again, comments and questions are welcome. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this uh, this is quite interesting. Yeah, uh, one uh, to have uh, you know things like quiz, yeah, or multiple choice questions, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, if we give points yeah, to certain numbers, five points, for example, and you have only how many questions there? Uh, you have uh, seven. You have only seven questions. Right. That uh, seven times five, yeah, 35. Uh, Correct. Is, is the highest score is only 35, or can you make it in, into 100? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, bringing this up. As I just mentioned, you can actually I'll, uh, set the number of points for each question, whether you want that question to be worth one point, you would just increase by clicking on the up arrow. If you want to decrease the number of points, you would just click on the down arrow. But by default, the number of points that you will find on Google Forms is five. But that doesn't mean that uh, your question, each question is going to be worth five points. I left it at five. Um, but again, it's up to you as a teacher mm -hmm. to make sure that you set the number of points this particular activity or quiz is worth based on your syllabus. If you in a, on your syllabus, you say that during the semester, you're going to give uh, 15 quizzes and each quiz is worth two points. So you have to make sure that you insert the number of points appropriate for each quiz so that at the end of the semester, those 15 weeks times two would be a total of 30 points of your grade, of your general grade. Uh, does that make sense? Does that help you illustrate a little bit? Yeah. So meaning that we, we have to create the points manually, it's not automatically into unless unless you want to leave it at as five uh, as the as the set default number of points, but you can manipulate the number of uh, points for each question. Okay, now we are waiting for comments and questions from participants. Any questions from participants? Come on. Students, we are open to come for questions. Uh, Juan, could you please show a little bit where you start editing the, the form? I mean, I kind of lost that moment a little bit. Just a little bit, please. Okay, it's just let me just go back and share the document. Um, what part were you referring to? The editing of the questions? Absolutely, where you start editing. Okay, so in order to edit, all you have to do is just click on the particular question you want to edit, and it opens up the menu. Uh, so from here, you can edit and either uh, remove a question, like in this case, if I want to remove it, 
the maybe part. If I okay. want to add another option, I would just click there. That, um, that one is easy. Where, where do you start the, I mean, where, where do you start the form? I, I'm sorry, I, I told you the wrong thing because obviously that is easier. I mean, where, where, do, you, where do you start that one? Okay, let's that, say I want to start a new quiz, right? From start. Is that the part you missed? Yes, that's it. Okay, so let's just come here and say, okay, and just open. Uh, the same way we say docs.google.com, we can say, okay, and type um, your URL window, and you can type in forms.google.com, and it'll bring you to Google Forms, so you can open a new document, and by clicking the plus sign, you have a new document right there. Now to start off, you need to come to the settings part first. And once you're here, you have to make sure you uh, make this, uh, turn this on to make this a quiz. And then there's a series of settings. You see the default five points that uh, Mr. Rizal was mentioning earlier, uh, we talked to Mr. Rizal about earlier, but you can make this worth whatever number of points you want, even fractions like uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, uh, but you can also increase it Good. if you want by mm -hmm. uh, clicking on the Chevron arrow up to 20, okay. 30 or whatever. Um, Very good. Okay, so you keep uh, creating the setting and stuff, then you come back to the questions and this is where you start. Mm -hmm. You can start by using the title, you can type it up here. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna, I saw I'm it gonna be very original, one, so I'm gonna type right. title on the title. So you see how now the title is here and the okay. title is here. But that's yeah, the name uh, of okay. the document. Does that uh, I was wondering, yes, yes, it does. Cause I mean, I had done that before. And then when I tried to share the test with my students, I, all they saw was my version, not theirs. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I partly I did something wrong. They saw my test and they saw my answers and they didn't see the part that they were supposed to see. <laughs> hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Probably because when you shared it, because here it says send. If you're sharing it, and then you probably gave him the, the role of editors. And that means that they now could edit your quiz <laughs> and they could see the answers and everything just like i'm looking at it right now okay uh, okay so i did not share, i did not like decide the roles everyone should have um, okay if they are responding so they should just be responding to the question like like right now i think some of you have started already responding to the questions uh if i look at oh by the way this is like a segue to go into the responses and what we see uh, I said graphic results. So we see here that one person um, scored five over here. The total of 14 uh, responded with the number 10. And you can see the scores right here by email. Uh, and you see the scores they got and so on and so forth. There's some graphics over here that help you interpret and see the results as people keep uh, responding. These numbers and these bars keep changing. But that's not the only way you can see the responses. You can see the responses by questions. And then you would see individual responses. <clears throat> there are 20 questions, 20 responses. And these are the responders. And then individual responses. If you click there, you'll be able to see the responses for each one of them. And then on this particular on this arrow, you move on to the next question. And you can see the different answers that everybody gave. So again, you can see the results as a summary, as a particular question, or as individual respondents to the quiz. Does that make sense? 
one. There, there, there are some thanks, questions. Thanks. One. Okay, I think thanks, Sabino, uh, for the questions. Yeah. Uh, Juan, there are another question from uh, Fakru, Fakur, siapa ini ya? Rahman ya, Fakur Rahman. Uh, is Google Form secure enough to ask uh, for respondents uh, and uh, respondent private information such as name, phone number, and email address? Juan? Well, um... On an academic setting, we normally have a number assigned to us as a student, right? That is your ID number. Uh, you might want them to be identified by that number if they are part of that institution or their email account or their name. But so far, I haven't seen the case where instructors ask students to provide their phone numbers. And no, that would be a no-no, at least here in the United States. <laughs> I don't know elsewhere. But uh, I would definitely ask them to provide their institutional email account or their uh, ID number, which is ideal. But not private information such as phone number, yeah, one. What about bank, bank account? No, also. <laughs> Uh, next question from uh, Muhammad Dimas. Yeah, uh, I have a question for Google Form. As a student, can we save the file to our storage and make it offline to keep the answers for our? What does it mean? I didn't understand. Muhammad Dimas, what 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 do you mean by this question? Yeah, do you mean to save the file? Yeah, to our document in phone or laptop. Mm, you mean the answers mm. or the questions? For all question and answer, maybe. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, you mean like like if you can download the document, the quiz download, and save it? Yeah, yeah I think uh, so. Downloading the documents, yeah. The question and also answers. Okay, so I think there is one way to export, and that is by. Can you see my screen? You see the yes, responses yes, here? Yes. To yes. the right, there's this green button that says create spreadsheet. So if you click on here, you would just create a spreadsheet, and it'll come up with all the answers and the day and time when they took it and the answer for each one of the questions and so on and so forth. Once you, once you have it on a spreadsheet like uh, Sheets on Google Docs, you can go ahead and click File and then Download. And over here you have options to download it as a PDF or as a Microsoft Excel uh, application or software. And that way you can have it on your computer or device. Notice how every question has been answered. Uh, they're listed at the questions are at the top, the answers are at the bottom. And each individual uh, participant is identified by email. Uh, does that answer your question? Uh, does it answer the questions, Timas? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome. One another uh, question you're from. Welcome, Timas. Another questions from uh, Yulnetri. Is it applicable for short essay responses in Google Forms? One. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, you can do short answers like paragraphs, like um, um, you name it. It's all the, it all depends on what you want to ask and you'll be doing it through Google Forms, absolutely. Can we give points for the answers for yes, essay? Just the same way we set it up, uh, as I just showed you, the points were five by default, but I can increase or decrease the number of points that the student would get for any particular answer. No, I mean when we want to mark, yeah, or we want to mark the the answers. Is it possible? 
marking the answers essay essay responses one in that case you remember uh, we used the google docs for essays and i think on this we didn't create any essay format question over here but i think that if you want to create a question let me just quickly go over here and see if this allows me absolutely here it is here it is you see that paragraph part if i add that um that would be my question what do you think about indonesia in general so the text will go in here by default it's set up to five points but again i can change that i can increase or decrease the number of points uh, depending on my intentions or say this is worth 15 points so we can make it 50 and then i can add a feedback and the feedback would be great job if the student finished it right and then i can go ahead and click done again this is a document where some people are already responding we have 30 responses because they watched the video but uh, that other question i just added is listed as a wrong one like nobody responded to that but that's just because i added it now so if i if i later wanted to read this i would have to let the students know that i had added a new question or probably send a new um ask them to retake the test with this new question added notice that now the total points went up to 50 points uh does that answer your question uh who you don't does it answer the questions yes thank you very much thank you very much Juan. You are you are very welcome. Thank you for asking. Next from Bu Saida, uh, the question is: There are many forms actually. One uh, Google form, Microsoft Teams form, Zoho form, and other forms. Yeah, would you would you like to compare the strengths and weaknesses of those forms? One. If I wanted to compare Google Forms with what? With uh, Microsoft Teams form and Zoho forms. Teams form, you know? Teams, but that's uh, a different, that's a different platform, right? Yes, yes. Something like this, right? Um, I work for this other office at Austos Community College and we use Teams, but we have never used Teams to teach, but we use Teams to work. Of course, we can share uh, documents throughout Teams, but uh, according to my colleagues, what they say is that Teams is not as, uh, as recommended as other platform for teaching, um, but to actually work, uh, and I don't know, that is the, uh, uh, their perception. I haven't used Teams to teach, but uh, I would like to hear from someone how convenient it is uh, to teach English. If anyone has any answer, I would like to hear it. Bu Saida, does it answer your question? Okay, it is, yeah, it is okay, but have it. Okay, thank you. And then next, the question from Muhammad Faris Hisham. Can we set the time limit for respondents to to take the quiz on Google Forms? I haven't seen a time limit set up on this. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. On these questions, I have created. Um, nope. 
I would say no right off the bat, but I will have to check and double check to give you an accurate answer. But uh, based on the quizzes I have created, based on my experience, I haven't had to set up a time limit for anyone to take the quiz. I know we can do that through Blackboard by using the adaptive release options, but not on Google Forms as far as I'm concerned. So this is the, the weaknesses of uh, Google Forms, right? Compared to Moodle test uh, quiz, Moodle quiz or Teams quiz. Well, it, it might be a weakness or it might be an advantage, well, not an advantage, but I wouldn't call it a weakness, but maybe an option because some students with certain disability or learning disabilities, they actually need more time than others to complete their work. And then if we just set a time limit for the quiz, those students might not be able to perform as well as expected just because of their particular learning disabilities. Now, the next question from Rozak Maulana one, uh, which abilities are suitable to be assessed in Google Forms uh, in terms of, let's say, reading, uh, writing, speaking, and listening, yeah. which are more Thank suitable to be assessed here? Yeah. Thank you for the question. And uh, yeah, as we just mentioned on the slideshow, uh, you can assess anything. Uh, you can assess anything you want. Uh, be it and listening comprehension, reading comprehension. Uh, the quiz you just took uh, is assessing your listen, your listening skills. Excuse me, because it's based on a video, uh, which has audio and images, of course. But if you were to use this document for uh, reading you could, instead of uploading a video, you could upload a particular uh, piece of writing, a piece of reading, right? A document that students will have to read and then you would have, you would create the series of questions that are connected to that reading. Uh, the same thing would happen if you would upload a, uh, an image, a picture, and on that picture, you would just ask students to describe that picture. And then uh, you would create a paragraph type of question and they would be responding and writing about that image. So again, you are evaluating their uh, writing skills. So again, you can evaluate all uh, four basic skills of the language by using Google Forms. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, and then the next, the next question, Siti Aziza. How can we copy the summary of responses in Google Forms? Is Google Form, uh, is Google Docs accessible by everybody in the group? Um, if, if Google Forms is accessible and Google Docs is accessible to everybody, I think once we share the link, uh, yes, everybody can ac access the, the form or the, the document. Now, if we, as creator of the form or the document, only allow the person to view the document, but not to edit or to comment on that, then that other person or anyone else would not be able to do that. But uh, having access to a particular form or document would only happen when the creator shares the document and provides the particular roles they want that person or people to have. Uh, and then Juan from Lalu Tohir here, uh, just to confirm yeah about the short answers in google form yeah does it mean that we don't have uh, to take into account whether the answer is correct or incorrect yeah, as long as there is a response there is a point 
Why? In the Google form, yes, there is no there is no correct answer here. We just uh, giving you the opportunity to interact with the document to get the feeling of being in a collaborative environment where other people are collaborating at the same time you are. And uh, whatever you posted in there is, uh, I wouldn't say it's irrelevant. Of course it is relevant, but uh, there is no right answer, or wrong answer to that. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, so if we compare to uh, Moodle quiz and also Teams quiz, yeah, it is different in terms of short answer quizzes. Is it, is it, is it right, Juan? So we yes, can... um, Moodle, we can set up different parameters for the quizzes and the same thing that happens on Blackboard as opposed to what we see here on Google Forms, absolutely. Thank you. I think there's no more questions. What? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Go on to the next. Uh, do we have until 10.30 today or until 11? Uh, I think until... Gutavia? I didn't... Gutavia, are you still yeah, around? Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, do we end at yes. 10 or...? 9.30, 9 we only have one and a half hour, I think. Oh, one and a half hour, but there is one more, uh, you know, topics. Yeah, we haven't discussed Kahoot. <laughs> Kahoot, yes, and I left it for the last because it's the the fun one. <laughs> but uh, the number of questions that popped up today are incredible, and I appreciate you are you all asked all these questions because uh, some clarification came out of them, and I hope our learning is taking place with the activities and the interaction we have had. But it's all up to you if you want me to continue until 11 so we can finish uh, the, what is still on the gate. Uh, we can continue or uh, what do you think? Actually, yeah. the time is, is up, yeah, Peter, yeah. Nine, nine, uh, but, but I think it's okay, you, you may have uh until 9.45, so that next week we only have 1 and 15. Okay. Okay, yeah, no problem. You may go on with your Kahoot. Yeah. All right, perfect. So let's do that. Okay, so let's go back to our slideshow and uh, let's share it with you all. And of course, after the questions, here's the exercise. And the idea is that you would uh, have this assignment where you are going to think and keep in mind your learners and create your own quiz. And of course, that would include the student email that is required, or if you want to ask them to type in their name or to type in their ID, it's up to you. But you would have to either include a video or an image, a text, or a phrase, an audio file, or a song. So either one of these uh, you would have to include. And then you would also create your quiz, keeping in mind your favorite quiz type, whether it is multiple choice, short answer, drop down, check boxes, etc. And you're going to create the auto correction, the feedback, and the required responses, meaning that all the responses need to be. Um, uh, responded, then you would have the say, to save the, the, the quiz and share it with your instructors. And here we have um, Mr. Rizal's email and my email account, so you can share it with us. <laughs> that is the assignment, and I can share this slide I show with you later, so you can share it with the students, Mr. Rizal, so they see the instructions. Uh, that is an assignment, that's the homework, you don't have to do it now. All right, so let's move on to the last part of our session two, which is Kahoot. Again, Salamat Data. And here we go. What is Kahoot? Well, Kahoot is a game-based platform and it lives 
uh, on kahoot.com. It is free, it's fun, and it's very well liked by users. Uh, the content is a content reviewing tool. So if you have some material you want students to revise, to review uh, in a fun manner, you can use Kahoot. Uh, it is web-based, but also you can download the app and have it on your smartphone and use it directly from your smartphone. If you're using the web, then you would have to uh, go to kahoot.it and you don't have to log in or do anything except that you would have to type in your PIN number and the username at the moment of playing. Um, and then you would create your Kahoot, the new one, or you can actually, um, if you don't create one, you can use one from the library they have available for you. And then you can adapt it. So let's have a look at Kahoot. And over here, I have set up my Kahoot, so it is linked to my Gmail account. So when I click here, this is kahoot.com. And then when I click on um, link with my uh, Google email account, here is where all my Kahoots are. Uh, when I come to the home page, I see all my Kahoots on the right hand side. And just to quickly go over this, I created one that has only three questions and uh, we can play it um, just to quickly get, uh, get an idea, get a feel of how the application works. In that case, I would like you to all go to kahoot.it once again. Kahoot, the same way it is spelled over here. And then dot IT, as you can see it right up here on the URL. And then you're going to type in the number that is going to appear on your screen. We're going to choose classic for this. And then this is the number you want to type in, 430-4245. And then it's going to ask you to type in your name. And your name should be on the screen. So everybody should be on the screen by the moment we start playing. But again, you need to go to kahoot.it. Once you are there, it's going to ask you for a PIN number, which is the one you see on the screen, 430-4245, and then type in your name so we can have you on the screen. Once we have done that, voila, we have Risky Amalia, already logged in. South Africa is already in, thank you. Once again, on your browser, whether on a computer or on your smartphone, type in kahoot.it, which is right here. And then once you do that, Type in the 4304245, that's the game pin number, and then type in your name. So it populates on our screen and we can see all the participants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
we're going to allow two more minutes uh, so people can actually uh, participate if in this two minutes nobody else logs in then we'll just go ahead and start the game the rest of you can watch and then have an idea of how it works by the way you're going to see a question once we get started and you'll read the question and then you have different options on the screen which are the answers but then you will have to go ahead and select one particular answer, which is color coded, whether it is green, blue, red, or yellow. And then if you answer correctly, you get immediate feedback on your cell phone saying that the answer was correct. Uh, sometimes they call you genius. They call you, they say awesome, great job, or whatever. If your answer is not right, it's going to say incorrect, meaning that you didn't uh, get it right. And of course, we're going to get immediate feedback, and we're going to see who's on the top, who's on the lead of the game, and how many points that student has accumulated which is very rewarding because a lot of students love winning and love having uh, points given to them for their correct answers. All right, those two minutes have already passed by. I'm sorry if the rest of you could not log in, but we're gonna start with the number of people that have already posted their names on the screen. So we have... A... <laughs> What happened? All right, so we have 15 students already logged in. I'm gonna hit start. And once um, we hit start, here comes the first question. And we're starting in three, two, one. The question reads, where is Universitas Islam Negeri? U-I-N located, and you have the options, you have the answers. You still have five seconds to choose your answer. As you can see, the correct answer is Semaran, Indonesia. And for that, 10 students answered correctly. Only one answered that it was located in Makassar, Indonesia. Uh, but it is located in Semaran, Indonesia, I believe, right? If I click next, it'll tell me who is on the lead, who follows, and who is at the bottom of the point. Okay, look at the highest score. Once we click next, it's going to bring up the next question. And here we go. Mr. Rizal is the main structure in this class. Is that true or false? You only have two options. Click one of the two. You still have three seconds. And you're done. Oh, look at that. 14 of you uh, answered that Mr. Rizal is the main instructor in this class, and that is correct. I believe four of you said that he was not. Okay. If I click next, then we see that now Ama has gone down to the second place, but now we have Amalia at the top with uh, 1765, 1765 points, which is pretty good. Let's move on. On the next, and this is the very last question. And it reads, this workshop is part of the English language teaching department program. Is that true or false? You have three seconds to finish. And everybody answered correctly. So congratulations. You've got 17 out of 17 answers correct. 
And if I click next, let's see who won the first prize, which it should be the gold medal. And it seems like uh, we had the bronze and we have the silver, and then we have the uh, congratulations, Amalia, uh, for getting the gold medal, Ama and Kiki for getting the silver and the bronze prizes. Great job. Now, once we have done this, students feel motivated and we as instructor can get their feedback by clicking here and asking them what they think about the quiz. Was it helpful? Would they recommend it to everybody? So let's do that right away. And players, players would give us feedback because on your screen, you have a mini survey and that'll help us learn, learn about your feedback. As instructors, we can also view the report. And when we click on this view full report, it'll display a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet displays, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it'll bring the players, how they responded, each one individually, the questions and the feedback they got. Juan, I think time is up, Juan. Yeah, it's yes, I know, I know. Uh, Anyways, so that is uh, the next step would be to have questions and answers about this and then give you, give you an assignment which should be given to you by your instructor, which is right here to create a Kahoot account and then create your own quiz. With that said, I say terima kasih. And for next Friday, which is Friday the 8th at 9 p.m. our time, we'll be talking about Padlet, Vokaroo, QR, QR codes, and Screencast-O-Matic. I think With this that one. Said, I say sampai jumpa minggu depan. Okay, thank you uh, for the class. Yeah, we discuss uh, many things. Yeah, Google Forms, Google Docs, and also Kahoot. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Juan, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Thank you for having me one more time. Thank you, Mr. John, for the French. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. Well, let us yes. uh, also uh, coming with us, head of our department, Bu Sayida Tulfadila, who is willing to say hello to you. I'm yeah. sorry, can you say that again, Dr. Tarulia? Sayida Tulfadila. Yeah. Mr. Our Juan. Yes, good morning, I'm Mr. Morning. Uh, good, I am good morning. Here. Good morning. Thanks so I much you. for your contribution to our department. Yeah, thanks so much for your coming to uh, this event, and see you next week uh, in the same event. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me, and I will be here. You're welcome, Mister. Mister. Terima kasih. Yeah, okay, thank you. And All right, thank you, Dr. Taruya. Yeah. Thank See you, you next week. Yeah. See you next Friday. Thank you, goodbye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Goodbye, everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Bye, everybody. Yeah. 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 For everyone, please do not leave this event soon because we will share the list of attendance. Okay. For participants, I mean, do not leave. Okay. Yeah, so do not case, leave this forum. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm.
Mohon maaf, Mim, saya mau bertanya ya. Ya apa itu isinya tinggal gitu? Uh, salsa bila, salsa bila, salsa bila. Halo, YouTube-nya di stop salsa bila. Salsa bila ada di sini ndak ini? Salsa bila. Bisa. Dan listnya bukan untuk hari ini, Bapak Ibu. Kayaknya untuk Sunday, oh, Oke, okay, please wait. Oke, okay, please wait. Please wait. Betul, kita nggak bisa masuk. Thank <laughs> you. 